Let's use my new technique, but notch a cookie cutter and see what happens. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. In this series, we've been examining a new technique of mine where we use a cup of some sort, put however many and whatever size notches you like in it, and then use it as a guide for your paint. Let's take a look at how this second experiment dried. We are two for two. This dried perfectly. Not a single crack or craze in the entire thing. And it was pretty darn wet. The metallic did its little breakup but it's less pronounced this time around because I tilted so much of it so that it's a really thin coat. So I think that it looks more like a light blue than that breakup we got in the first experiment. I see the metallic this time around more. It appears more like a frosted coating. I'm hoping I'm capturing that you should be able to see the difference between the purple and what's around it to see the frosting. I'm hoping that shows up. The only thing that I think I'm probably going to want to touch up is the white. The white sank and popped up in weird little spots like this and that. You know, and they're just odd looking. They almost look like mistakes. They don't necessarily add to the image in any way. So I think I would prefer to just sort of take a little dab of purple and paint over that and a little magenta, paint over that and just make them go away because they're not really adding anything. I think this is gonna be a great candidate for resin. I think this will look beautiful resined. So I'm really excited to do that. And I'll do that with you guys so that you can see that process too. All right, well, we are on a roll. Let's see what we can do next. For today's experiment, I'm making six notches in a flower-shaped cookie cutter, and I'm going to pour a dirty cup down the middle. The way that I've done the notches is I made sort of a midpoint. I marked myself the midpoint on each of the petals. Then I made a mark on either side of that midpoint. And then using scissors, I cut up those two outer marks. And just to make life easy on myself, what I do is I flip up the notch like that so that when my cookie cutter or cup is down, these notches sticking out sort of let me know where the paint is going to be escaping. It makes it very visible and very obvious to me. But you can, you might choose to remove these all together if you, if you prefer. The other advantage to keeping this attached is that I can flip it back down and choose not to have the notch be and that particular one be an opening. So I can close off a door, so to speak. But for this one, I'm going to have all six notched open. Now, I'm doubting the shape of the cookie cutter is going to have that much of an impact because it's predominantly round, really. And I'm pretty sure that once I lift it, the paint is going to round out. I picked it more for its size because it's going to let me start a little bit of a ring pour in the middle before it escapes out through my notches. I'm hoping that gives us an interesting effect. Let's find out. For this painting, I'm adding more colors. I'm doing the whole rainbow. I'm sticking to my DecoArt Americana, and I've thinned my paints with DecoArt's pouring medium. For those of you playing at home, I'm using Royal Fuchsia, 
jack-o'-lantern orange, cadmium yellow, sour apple, peacock teal, bright blue, and lavender. Let's make a pretty dirty cup. <laughs> that sounds so weird. <laughs> I don't know who started the name dirty cup, but it just sounds so funny sometimes. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I have two ounces. Okay, our cup is finished. I ended up putting the rainbow in about, I think, three and a half times. Like before, I'm gonna put down a coat of white paint. And I do this to help the pour flow and in previous videos, I edited out a lot of this step because I just thought it would be boring to watch me spread white paint. But I realized that it was confusing some people because it made it seem as if I use a lot less white paint than I do. So I will cut out less this time. <laughs> just so that you could see how much I actually use. Because you want the coat to be even, but you also want it to be sufficient. If it's too thin, your pour is not going to move as well as it could. I love my pick because it spreads the paint very e evenly. I want to make sure I get it to come off the edge. So now I have a good, even white coat down. And I am ready to start this new pour. Oh my gosh. I'm always a little excited and nervous all at the same time. All right, let's see how centered I can get this. All righty, let's pour this pretty cup. Oh my word. <clears throat> I'm just pouring straight down the middle. I'm not doing anything. I'm not shaking the cup, spinning the cup, anything. I want to make this as simple as possible. It's funny, I only see red, the magenta, the blue, and purple. But I put all seven colors. All right. That is everything. I'm gonna let it sit there for a while and not touch it for a little bit to see if anything else needs to work its way out, <laughs> so to speak. I almost don't want to lift <laughs> the cookie cutter. Don't these look like peacock feathers? It's so pretty. I love what the white is doing here. It's sort of spilling over into these shapes, but in a very feathery sort of way. It's really stunning. I'm really letting it sit and move on its own for as long as I can. And what's great about that is it's getting toward the edge without me having to do anything. So I'm going to wait another couple of minutes before I even lift the cookie cutter and definitely before I start tilting. So when I did the pour here, it also had to push out the white paint that was here. So that's what all this is. Okay, I've let this sit for a couple of minutes and I think that it's spread as much as it's going to on its own. And it is time to lift the cutter. Oh my gosh, I'm so curious as to what's going to happen. I'm going to try to be as good about coming straight up as I can. How cool is that? Now in theory I could just leave this be and let it dry. I 
I think I now have faith in this medium that it can do almost anything and that this amount of paint would dry okay. But I think we got to tilt it and see what happens because we know what it looks like now and I could just stop here and we're done. But let's see what happens if we tilt it. Okay. This one fall off. Okay. I'm gonna break the surface tension here first. It had started to mound up and I wanna make sure that this paint is already wanting to fall off the edge. Do the same thing over here. So I'm just making sure that the white paint is already falling over the edge so that when the pour hits this area, it doesn't just sit there on the edge, afraid to fall over. If it sees that the white paint fell over, it'll be like, oh, okay, it's safe to go there. <laughs> These are very subtle. These are oh, really pretty too. I love what this white is doing. That's just so cool looking. Am I going for some kind of symmetry? Am I going for centering? This. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blow just the edge out. So this is just hose from my fish tank. But now these are looking like butterfly wings, which is kind of cool. It's giving a really cool tattered edge, which I like. It's probably coming back in because there's a, too much white paint there. It's probably pushing back. Where I'm at with this right now, I like this. I like the edges. I love these little white patches. Love them. Love them. Love them. I like this peacocky, feathery looking thing happening here. These two are a little boring. I mean, if you're up close on them, you can see the subtle rings, but I feel like they are kind of like big blotches of color. It's a pretty color, but it's just a blotch of color. So I'm going to see what happens, but I want to do it with a wider. What this is telling me too is that there is a lot of paint on the canvas, surprise, surprise. I don't feel compelled to do the others, though. I don't know if that's okay to just do two. It's your painting, Miriam. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm, hmm. <laughs> well, I certainly like these. I don't know that I want to commit to doing them everywhere, though. All right, let me just try. I'm going to stop there. I'm done. I am done. I'm going to let that dry. There's a lot of paint again. So I am putting all my faith in this medium and saying, please, please save this painting again. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at the details. Remember to subscribe for more fun experiments in paint, inks, and resin, and hit the bell while you're at it to know when new videos are out. For those of you that are patrons from Patreon, your exclusive extra video will be available for you at patreon.com on Friday. 
If you'd like to see what other extra goodies patrons are getting, head on over to patreon.com and join the team making these videos possible. Once again, this is rather different than when it started. I'm seeing butterfly wings and peacock feathers and, I don't know, organic-y looking stuff. I'm thinking that less individual layers of colors might be better for this to permit more distinct colors, because I think a lot of them blended together. I'm definitely doing this again because it's too cool, and I think the next time I'm going to use the star. <laughs> what are your thoughts about it? I read every single comment. I'm not able to answer every single one, but I answer as many as time allows. Give this a thumbs up if you're enjoying this new technique and are interested in more variations. Join my Facebook group for more ideas, to see beautiful art being made by artists from all over the world. Question answering and downright fun is happening in that group. It's a great growing group of people. Okay, so that's your homework. Check out patreon.com slash Miriam's Nature and also join my Facebook group. Go let your creative natures shine now. Thank you for spending time with me. See you in a couple of days, once this dries. <laughs> Bye now.